Czech presidency has followed a depressingly familiar pattern. Continuity, more of the same, the continuing obsession with climate change and the continuing drive to have new legislation. You said that under this presidency, legislation in 80 new areas had been worked on and you seem to be proud of that. I would have thought it was about time we took a couple of steps back and said what we've got in the European Union is an over-regulated model that is serving us very badly during the depths of a recession. And yet more status quo. You supported the idea of shooing in Mr Barroso without there being any sort of proper contest. But it's on the Lisbon Treaty that I was most interested. You ratified the treaty through your own parliamentary chambers without, of course, the thought of giving the people in your own country a referendum to express their opinion. But it's when it comes to Ireland that I really get interested because you said that you wanted there to be a credible policy for Ireland with their second referendum. And so you produced these guarantees and here they are. Guarantees on the right to life, on taxation, on security and defence. Uh, this document has no legal force whatsoever. It is not worth the paper that it's written on. You are the author of a disgraceful attempt to con the Irish into voting for this Lisbon Treaty in their forthcoming referendum. Of course, you've been supported by Mr Barroso on that. He doesn't ever respect the result of democratic referendums, whether they're in France, the Netherlands or Ireland. He says we must ignore them. We must continue. It's all about power. It's all about him and the EU institutions getting more power at the expense of the member states. I hope the Irish tell you all where to go in the second referendum on October the 2nd, and they just might. However, 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 I don't wish to be mean-spirited because there was one wonderful, bright, uplifting moment during the Czech presidency. A moment when all of us that believe in nation-states, that believe in democracy, that believe genuinely in the rule of law, could come into this chamber and feel, for the first time in my experience, proud of the fact that we were part of this European Parliament. And I am, of course, referring to the visit of Vaclav Klaus. What a wonderful speech that was. Coming into this chamber and telling a few home truths and pointing out that European parliamentarians and leaders are not listening to the peoples of Europe, at which 200 of you got up and walked out of the room. So, at least for Vaclav Klaus, we thank you very much for the last six months. <coughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Farage. Mr. Mulsa, two minutes for the non-attached. You have the floor, Mr. President. Can I, I'd like just to make a que put a question. Uh, is it, uh, I'm not criticizing this, is it allowed to have the flags uh, in uh, our... Because uh, if, if, if it is allowed, I just want to put also the European flag here today, if I may say. Okay. To find out more about who we are and what we stand for, go to the UK Independence Party website at www.ukip.org.